Hey, so I've been using the BenQ GV30 for the past couple of weeks and I've got to say, this portable projector has everything. It's got no sacrifices when it comes to sound, no sacrifices when it comes to UI, and no sacrifices when it comes to image quality or portability. So let's talk about it. As far as the design of the projector goes, it's a fairly unique one. It's a circular finish and it comes in this sort of bag that you can carry anywhere with you. So it's sort of epitomizing the portable nature of the projector, which I think is really good. Everything fits into this bag. You can carry it, but you can also carry the projector standalone if you wish to do so that way. It also has this base underneath, which you can use the projector to magnetically attach. And the base has two functions, one to keep the sturdiness of the projector, but number two, you can also use the base to be able to configure the projector orientation to whatever you'd like. But we'll get to that in just a moment. Aside from that, you're looking at a very durable and robust projector. It's dust proof, it's waterproof to a certain extent, and you can even drop it from up to a 70 centimeter height without it having any sort of issues. But I didn't want to test that because, well, this is provided by BenQ and I didn't want to break it or anything like that. But you do get a very, very good amount of durability. You can carry it to your beach, you can carry it to your pool, you can even carry it to your party or your vacation and have no issues with the durability of the projector. It's also got a fair few amount of ports. You get HDMI, you get an audio port, you get a charging port, and you get a Type-C USB port with which you can connect your multimedia um, devices if you want to stream from there. You can even connect a secondary display to mirror or you can use the HDMI port to do the same. With the focus of this projector being wireless, the one thing that I really found helpful was the wireless connectivity that you get with the included dongle. Now the dongle is a headache to put inside the projector and you get this sort of a guitar-like pick that you need to pry open the outside of the projector to be able to put that in. But once you have it settled down and in, you seal it up and you never have to touch that dongle again because it's self-sufficient, it's self-charging, and it's self-powered. But that dongle gives you access to Android 9.0 and what is basically Android TV or Google TV that gives you the plethora of applications you need to pretty much run the projector with anything you want. So I guess you can have things like Amazon Prime, you can have things like even games running on your projector if you want that. So all of that works pretty flawlessly and I really found the UI of the projector to be impressive. I've had UIs in the past with portable projectors that aren't that great. They're very laggy, very choppy, but this one was really, really good and you can use the remote control to navigate through the UI in however way you want to do so. But the one thing I want to point out with the remote control is that I wish the keys were backlit when you're in a dark environment and watching sort of multimedia, you sort of have to look for things on the remote. Whereas if it was backlit, you can see it wherever you want and however you want. And that just makes it a bit easier. That's maybe one suggestion that BenQ can take into consideration. Now let's talk about multimedia casting. I use the projector for the majority of the time I had it wirelessly. So I was casting things like my cricket matches, my football matches, as well as my YouTube videos directly on the projector. The one thing you have to keep in mind is that it is a 720p uh, display and I was using it at about a 1.5 to 2 meter distance. So I placed the projector on the table right behind this camera and I was projecting right behind myself on this uh, blank canvas of a wall you see. And to be honest, the 720p resolution didn't bother me too much unless I was really pixel peeping and really looking into text. I think fine text can sometimes lose that um, sharpness, which is something that you have to keep in mind. This isn't gonna blow your mind if you're coming from things like a 1080p projector or a 4K projector. And I think you have to sort of level your expectations that way. But if you do have your expectations that way, I think you're going to be pretty much sorted. Now, another thing I wanna point out is that this thing isn't going to be the ideal projector for outdoor use because under direct sunlight, it doesn't work quite as well. You start to see things that are a bit faded, colors get washed out. So if you really wanna take advantage of this projector, put it in your room in a very dark environment and you're gonna get the best quality and the best experience that way. Now, as I said, I watched YouTube videos and all of that on my projector, but you can also do things like connecting your display. Now, the display aspect wirelessly is a bit of a, you know, cumbersome issue because when you connect your display, you sort of have to see that lag or that input lag that you don't notice when you're watching multimedia content. So that's something you have to keep in mind. And even when you're streaming wirelessly through the YouTube application and casting, 
Uh, if you start to scrub through your video, you will start to see that there is some voice synchronization issues from the projector, which is something that takes about 15 to 20 seconds before it sorts itself out. Sometimes it buffers quite a bit. So again, that is a problem that I'd like to point out. But aside from that, it has been pretty much consistent with my multimedia use. The one big problem though is that even though it's got this plethora of applications, things like Amazon Prime, where you get tons of movies, all of these other applications, the one application that isn't supported, and this is Netflix's fault, is Netflix. So you cannot cast Netflix uh, content on this projector, even through the web browser. You have workarounds where you can connect uh, via a different app store called Aptitoad App Store. I haven't tried that. The one thing that worked for me is whenever I wanted to watch Netflix, I just connected my laptop to the projector wired and that way you can watch Netflix without any problem whatsoever. So that was my solution for Netflix. And while we're on the topic of multimedia consumption, I do want to say the audio quality of the projector is also really good. It's got multi-channel stereo audio, which isn't something that you see from portable projectors. And this one has it. So up to 70% volume, you're going to have a splendid time listening to content. Higher than that, it's going to get a bit distorted and you sort of hear this buzz sound, but I don't think you're going to go higher than 70%. So in terms of the overall multimedia package, as far as you can accept 720p content, you're gonna be fine. I think you're gonna be fine in a small room. If you wanna use this as your main cinema home theater projector, it's not going to cut it. But if you wanna use it for personal use, maybe in your room, just like I have, I think it's going to do a pretty good job. Especially with the technology and how the overall hardware is designed, oftentimes you wanna adjust things while watching on the projector. And you can do that because this thing has auto keystoning. So you'll be able to get a very, very clear image without sort of any sort of distortion. It's up to 40 degrees keystoning. So that's pretty good. You also get autofocus, which means whenever you move the projector around, the projector will grab focus on the wall that it's being displayed and have everything cleared out for you. And you can even go one step further and control this autofocus further so that you get the sharpest quality text and images. And last but not least, the design and the hardware means that you can rotate the projector all the way up to 180 degrees and watch things on your ceiling if you wish to do so. And to be honest, that works absolutely fantastically because when I'm on my bed and I wanna watch things, I just do that, watch the things on my ceiling and don't have to worry about anything. So yeah, that's my review of the BenQ GV30. As far as the battery life of the projector goes, you're looking at 2.5 hours of battery usage, which means you can get maybe half a game of cricket in there, a full game of football or a full movie before you need to charge it. The best part about it is that the difference between it being unplugged and plugged in isn't that massive. And even when it's on your side table right next to you while you're watching multimedia content, it isn't going to be really bothersome because it doesn't emit that much heat, nor does it emit that much sound. So overall, really happy with the GV30. If you want to check out the projector for yourself, I'll leave a link down in the description. And if you want a projector that can satisfy your needs in all fronts, you can carry it around, you can use it for basic multimedia consumption, personal multimedia consumption, and just anything to do with movies as well as multimedia, this one's for you. If you want to use things gaming or things like, you know, connecting your laptop and then being able to work, maybe the input lag and the quality of the projector isn't going to cut it. But yeah, those were my thoughts on the GV30. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more videos. This was Vabhav and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.